Welcome to video eight, our journal entry exercise. In this video, we are gonna convert our transaction analysis entries into journal entries. So here we are in our roadmap. We've talked about the basics of journal entries, but now we're actually going to conduct the practice of recording journal entries from our transaction analysis exercise. So here we go. This is just a reminder of our balance sheet accounts and our income statement accounts. Uh, and this is a cheat sheet. So if, if you have an asset account that you wanna increase it, you increase it with a debit, the same with expenses. Asset and expense accounts increase with a debit. Liabilities, equity, and income accounts increase with a credit. And let me actually go back to this slide here and say, remember assets equals liabilities plus equity? That's our relationship, right? Let me draw this in. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. Remember in the past video I said, as long as debits equal credits, your balance sheet will stay in balance? Well, you're seeing it right here on this slide. As long as your debits equal your credits, your balance sheet will stay in balance. That's because debit is on one side of the equal sign and credit is on the other side of the equal sign. That's why it's true that when you do a journal entry, if debits equal credits, your balance sheet will balance. And remember, income accounts increase with a credit. That's because they increase equity and you increase equity with a credit. Expense accounts increase with a debit. That's because they decrease equity and you decrease equity with a debit, okay? Okay, now we can move on to our journal entries from our transaction analysis. So our 12 transactions are gonna be back up on the slides here, but rather than posting them straight into my financial statements, I'm just gonna record journal entries for each of these transactions. So it may be helpful to even open up the transaction analysis exercise that we went through and look at it as I'm writing down the journal entries on these slides. Our first transaction, if you remember, we received $2,000 for ownership in the company. Cash was involved, cash went up. Cash is an asset. We increase asset accounts with a debit, and so we will debit cash by 2,000. Equity is also involved here. We want equity to go up. Equity is a, uh, contributed capital is the equity account we're interested in. We want it to go up. We increase equity with a credit. So we'll credit contributed capital to make contributed capital go up. You'll see in this journal entry, let's talk about our formatting. Debits are before credits. Debits are on the left. Credits are on the right. Debits are equal to credits. And what I've put is the account name and the account category. And you're gonna see that for every journal entry that we do. You're also gonna see these gold arrows describing the effect that the entry has on the account. So borrow $1,000 from a bank, we're receiving cash, cash will go up, debit makes cash go up. Debt is also going up because we have a new uh, amount that we're borrowing and we owe someone money. So we need to increase liabilities, we increase liabilities with a credit. Next transaction, we pay $500 for new PP&E, cash was involved, cash is leaving the business this time, so we'll credit cash to make cash go down, and we'll debit PP&E, PP&E is an asset, we'll debit PP&E to make, to make that account go up. So here we have debits before credits. This debit to PP&E increases PP&E because it's an asset, and this credit to cash decreases cash because it's an asset. You decrease an asset with a credit. Next, we receive $200 of new inventory, we'll pay for it later. Well, we're gaining new inventory. Inventory is an asset. We make assets go up with a debit. So we'll debit inventory for 200. And we haven't paid for it yet, so this is an accounts payable. Accounts payable is going up. Accounts payable is a liability. We increase liabilities with a credit. So we'll credit accounts payable to make it go up. And since debits equal credits, I don't need to check that my balance sheet is in balance. As long as debits equal credits, your balance sheet will stay in balance. In this case, we're increasing assets and we're increasing liabilities. And since those are on opposite sides of the equal sign, your balance sheet stays in balance. Okay, our next transaction is we're paying $200 to our inventory supplier. So now we're paying off this accounts payable. Accounts payable needs to go down now, right? And cash also needs to go down. Well, we made accounts payable go up with a credit, didn't we? Remember that? Accounts payable went up with a credit 
it goes down with a debit. So we'll debit accounts payable to reduce it to zero. And then cash is also going down. Cash is an asset, so we'll decrease that with a credit. Our next transaction, and this is a long one. This is a sale. We're gonna sell inventory that cost $100 for a price of 300 on account. Let me just reveal the entire journal entry here and let's take it uh, piece by piece. Let's take the top line first. Someone owes us $300, don't they? We delivered something to somebody. They promised to pay us $300. They haven't paid us yet, but we need to keep track of people who owe us money. So we're gonna increase accounts receivable, which is an asset. We'll increase it with a debit of $300. Now, why does somebody owe us money? Because we earned revenue, okay? We delivered some inventory to them. That's why they owe us money. We've earned revenue. Revenue is an income uh, account. Income accounts, just like equity, increase with a credit. So this credit to revenue increases revenue by 300. Now the next part of the journal entry is the inventory and cost of goods sold. First, let's start with inventory. We're giving up inventory, $100 worth of inventory. So inventory needs to go down by 100. Inventory is an asset. We decrease assets with a credit. So we're gonna credit inventory by 100. And where is it going? Well, it's a cost of goods that we sold. So it goes onto our income statement. Expense accounts increase with a debit. So we're gonna increase cost of goods sold with that debit of $100. And that debit, when it goes into retained earnings, is gonna decrease the equity account called retained earnings. So that's the, we're increasing this expense with a, with a debit, and that expense will decrease equity once we close it into retained earnings. Now note here, this is the first time we've talked about the income statement in a journal entry. In the transaction analysis, we flowed these income statement effects to retained earnings immediately, didn't we? Well, we're not gonna do that this time. I'm not recording the entry to retained earnings yet. I'm just gonna do that one time at the end of the year to zero out all of my income statement accounts at the same time. So you'll see that in a future video. Let's move on to the next transaction, which is now we're collecting $300 from that customer. So we're collecting on that account receivable. We're reducing the accounts receivable because they don't owe us money anymore. We do that with a credit and we're receiving cash, we increase cash with a debit. Our next transaction, we're receiving a new customer prepayment of 300. Cash is involved here, cash is going up. We increase cash with a debit. And we also have a new obligation that we didn't used to have. We've got a customer who paid us and they're expecting us to deliver to them in the future. So we've got this new obligation. It's a liability called deferred revenue and that needs to go up by 300 you make liabilities increase using a credit. Now we'll deliver the inventory to the customer that prepaid. And here's a very similar journal entry to what you saw previously. We're gonna earn that $300 as revenue, increasing revenue by 300 with a credit. And we're decreasing deferred revenue. We're settling our obligation. So we decrease deferred revenue, a liability, with a debit. We're also losing our remaining $100 of inventory, so we'll credit inventory by $100 to reduce it to zero. That reduces the asset account inventory. And we're gonna further increase our cost of goods sold expense account. And so we debit that account to increase it by another $100. Finally, uh, we need to pay our employee and we need to depreciate our PP&E, that's what's left. First, let's give an advance to our employee. We're gonna give the employees some cash as an advance. So cash is gonna go down, and that's gonna be an asset account called prepaid expense for our employee. So cash goes down with a credit, we credit cash by 100, and we set up this asset for the prepaid expense. We're getting, we have the employees promise to work for us in the future, that's an asset. So we're setting up this asset with a debit to increase the asset. When the employee earns the wage, now we're gonna reverse that asset, right? That asset no longer has value because the employee did their side of the bargain. They earned it as wage expense. We'll increase wage expense with a debit of 100 and we'll reduce that asset to zero with a credit of 100. In our final transaction, note that the, all the previous journal entries that we did, I defined the three types of journal entries. Those are called general journal entries because I record them as transactions occur. This next journal entry, I'm just gonna to refer to as an adjusting journal entry, and this isn't a consequential distinction, general versus adjusting journal entries. But 
Uh, I'm going to refer to this as an adjusting journal entry. The only reason I'm recording it is because I'm at the end of the year now and I need to reflect the fact that time has passed and my PP&E has lost value. In fact, the, the fact that the employee earned the wage over time, you could also consider that an adjusting journal entry if you want to. So the definitions aren't that consequential. We might have considered the previous journal entry an adjusting journal entry as well. But for purposes of this exercise, let's consider this our only adjusting journal entry. Our PP&E lost $100 of value. We need to reduce the asset by 100. We reduce assets with a credit, and that's called depreciation expense. We increase depreciation expense with a debit. So that's what the journal entry is, a debit to depreciation expense, which is an expense on the income statement, and a credit to PP&E to reduce the PP&E. So that's it. That's all 12 journal entries for our 12 transactions during the year. And here it's all shown on this one page. All we did is we converted our transaction analysis, which actually taught some, took some thinking and analyzing. It was a pretty mindless task to just convert that into debits and credits of journal entries because there's a correspondence between increase, decrease, and debit and credit, uh, which is useful for converting your transaction analysis into journal entries. That's it for that video. So we've recorded the journal entries for our company. Now we're gonna introduce you to the basics of T accounts in the next video. T accounts are how we keep track of our journal entries. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.